This is Richard back at you. Today we're working on a 2003 GTO 60 motor, cammed heads, headers, the whole nine yards. These guys, believe me, can tear up anything, uh, and they've proven it to me already multiple times. But we just can't get them to spend the big bucks to uh, keep them going. So we're going to build him another unit, uh, build him still a NOS unit, but no billet shafts or anything like that. So uh, they say they're not going to hot rod it no more. Okay. But anyway, we're going to build him a nice unit. So let's get this thing apart. Now we got a core because his last one was totally destroyed. The stator was twisted off. I mean, it was burn up beyond broke. I mean, burn up you could imagine. Um, now these guys break stuff. They twist shafts off. They, I don't know if they're neutral dropping in it or what they do. They, I never get the truth out of them. So I, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh oh. GTO runs, but not that good. Yeah. Uh oh. He's never burnt the tranny up. Nope. He always breaks it. But the problem is, he lets his brother drive it. And every time his brother brings it back, actually, his brother walks back most of the time. <laughs> so. You're not lying. I'm not lying. It's either record or he walks up. So, this thing, uh, hopefully this one here won't get beat up that way. We're not sure exactly what's wrong with these cores, so the core's a core. I got four of them that come in. This one smelt the best, <laughs> but you know how that goes. And I stuck a stick down in there and kind of give it an old whiff <laughs> to see what it smelt like. Yes, sir. So. That's funny. Hey, you don't want to get apart and just be totally destroyed. It no. We like to have a little bit of something to work with. Now, it's still, it's going to get all new bushings. Uh, we got five pinion planets over here we're going to be putting in it. Uh, Corvette servo, all the Transgo stuff. So, we have our lockup o-ring here. Now I'm not even sure what this come out of. I know it's a four-wheel drive. You can tell it's got a lot of grit around the seal and retainer and stuff. Hey, I'm getting hey, my... You about just threw that thing off the table. I almost did that, didn't I? I'm telling you, do a flip for me. Getting my strength back. That's good. Yeah. Hey. Oh my gosh, looky there. Well, that don't mean anything because it's got a brand new filter. Hey. <laughs> Hey, so hold oh, on. Then the accumulator fell off. Well, it's a core, but it looks like they were servicing it. Yeah. Brand new filter. Don't even look like they ever put fluid in it. Pan nice and clean. So, then the accumulator, it's not even hooked up no more. Where the piston runs looks really nice through here. It's good. Don't feel any pin wear or anything like that. So we got a new piston that we'll be putting in here. So it's got the long shank on it. Stuff so gives a lot of support. So this one here looks like it's probably going to come almost close level to the top. Man, you could that. bring that up just a tad. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't hurt it a bit. You wouldn't probably tell the difference, but I, would, I like to bring them up to the top. So. Now we do, it is a late version. Uh, it has a later plug. Now the pressure control solenoid is missing too. So we don't know what's going on here. A core is a core. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Maybe we'll look inside here and keep our fingers crossed. And Hey, what, they, what do they say for a skunk? Black box of chocolates. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. You never know. But I don't see a lot of shavings or anything like that, so that really looks good. 
you know, I don't see it all contaminated all through the, the valve body and stuff, so that's a plus there. Sockets off and on two times. Now this is a four-wheel drive unit that will retro back to a two-wheel drive. You hear the sound of that one? Mm -hmm. Listen to the sound of this one. I like this one a lot too. Man, you almost took them out with the other one. Yeah, darn it. I didn't get to practice with it. <laughs> hey, I got some eights here. This thing works really nice. I'm not gonna lie, I'm jealous. I don't even have that one. You don't have this one no, yet, Ken? I don't have that one. It's I a love new them. one. The lights right there work really well. We got our map sensor, or not our map sensor, but our manifold pressure sensors here. This is the sealed one, we can't take it apart, but like see each one of these are little pillow switches right here that the computer, uh, the fluid pressure pushes on and clicks and tells the computer that it made that shift, what gear you're in. So you can feel them click. Over here and get our valve body off. I say this one doesn't look uh, like it's ever been messed with, and I like these pipes. There's no water, it's never been messed with. Now, a forward accumulator right here, we're gonna have a plastic piston in here. You always want to upgrade these to aluminum, uh, especially if you're building a high horsepower unit like we're going to be building. It's a high pressure unit, uh, and you don't want any plastic in this thing. You want to get it all out of there. Then you have your valve and spring right beside it. So, got your manual valve. Of course, the lockup valve is probably not going to be messed with at all. It's all original stuff. Let's get this out of here and show you guys what it looks like. Blow this out of here real quick. Watch your. Okay, guys, everybody's wanting to know how I block a lockup valve on the late models. I'm going to show you really quick. Okay. This valve come out of the valve by just like that. It's got that spring in there. Okay. I'm going to take these two metal check balls. I'm going to drop it in that hole. I'm going to drop this one in this hole. I'm going to take these two springs, or that two springs, uh, that one spring. Oops, get it back to way. Now I'm going to put a little bit of grease in here to hold the balls into place. And then I'm going to slowly, ah, dang it. Let me well, do I have to have some grease. Yeah, let me get some grease. What I do with it? Okay. And you guys are mad at me, I know, because I ain't got my gloves on. Trent? Sorry. Guys, we're really busy. We've had a wonderful day, but it is go time. It so is. We are trying to finish up some videos and Nick pick things. Okay, basically we put a check ball down in the end of the valve right there, like that. And we put one in here. And I'm going to take and put that spring back in there, and I'm going to push that valve all the way to the back. And I'll pull it back out and clean it when I get done. But I'm just giving you an idea. Push that all the way in there. Now this thing right here will have, this uh, cap right here will have wear on the inner one, on the inner side. The outer side won't. So turn it around, that way the new end is at the ceiling part right here. So when you stick that back in there, the 
it's not going to go. It's going to be spring loaded. But I'm going to take and put this like this, and I'm going to grab this screwdriver, and I'm going to push hard on that, and I'm going to put this clip back in. Look at that. Now, that valve is blocked. It will not move. How simple is that, guys? Real simple. Just add two check balls, one in each into each valve, put the spring back in, put it all back together, push hard on it, collapse that spring, put the clip in, now you're in a non-PWM system. Real simple, five seconds, like that. If you have a converter that's uh, pulsating, you can drop the valve body and do it, put it back on. You have to drop the valve body though. You can't get it off, so. Didn't we just have a gentleman, they rebuilt it and something like that, and they're still having issues with that, but they probably didn't. They didn't mess with it, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's a common problem, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Very common. Now we're replacing the wiring harness on this. I can't tell if there's ever been any fluid leakage or anything like that, but uh, we have a really nice harness. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off my hands really quick since I did think about putting gloves on just to be safe, guys. Get them out of the box. So. Yes, we've been busy, busy, let me tell you. We have been busy. So, pass on here real quick. Okay, now we got some gloves on. We're back to where we need to be. This is our new wiring harness here. It's kind of a universal style. Uh, that way you can plug, uh, it'll plug into different uh, sensors up here on the front. Uh, they make two different styles for the years and stuff like that. So. That's a really nice uh, piece to put in there. So. Okay. Now we're looking over here at our check balls and stuff. All of them are still in there. Everything still looks good. We'll pull these out and see how much plate wear we have. Plate looks pretty good too. You can see some dimpling right through here, but not very bad. Now it is a round hole, square hole. You want to make sure you put the right gaskets on this thing. They make a round hole, round hole, round hole, square hole in your overhaul kit when you get it. It'll say valve body or it'll say case. Remember, don't get them on backwards. On top or bottom wrong, you'll be in trouble too. Get our fourth gear accumulator piston out right here. Now this is the one that we do block. We'll stack dual pistons in here. We'll stack it in here like this. We put about a 30,000 shim in here and stack it up, set it back down in there. We don't beat a check ball in the case and uh, ruin the case. We uh, like to do it that way. That way we can always go back if we want to. There's really no reason to ever go back, but uh, that is just old school stuff. our parking assembly off here. Now we do have one check ball here in the case under the plate. Let me see it there. And then we have our linkage valve, or I don't know what heck you call that linkage of some sort for the manual valve. I don't know if they ever named that or what. Right. <laughs> But they do not make different lengths for the 700 and the 4L60E, so you don't want to get them mixed up. You got them, a lot of them laid parts laying around or something. You don't want to just go out and grab one and put it in there. They are different lengths. I am sure hoping that this thing looks good on the inside. We are praying for nice parts. Nice parts. Spend a lot of money for cores, and you just never know what you're getting until you take it apart, and then they don't guarantee nothing. And you don't get your money back if it's no good. Yeah, they don't. Nope. I don't even like the pans being taken off or anything like that. I like them to be not touched. 
So, I look here. Yeah. Really nice pump. Got a little staining. You can't feel that. Looks really nice. Nice. You can see here the converter wasn't going in very deep. I got you. You can space that converter really far up in there. Easy 30,000, 40,000 more. Mm -hmm. So, so you don't realize how critical that converter spacing is when it comes to uh, race car, high pressure applications and stuff like that. The higher you bump the pressure up, the harder it is on the hub on the converter. So it's always trying to break the lugs off. I don't have a converter. It's always trying to break these off. You put a 500 boost valve or something like that and you bump that pressure up, this thing's just trying to rip it off. And if you get it halfway in here, this thing tries to run crooked and starts wobbling here, eating your pump out. So that's why you want that deep end of that converter. You can look at your pump slide here. And you can see they always got this bluing on there. But you can see here where it's starting to wear through the bluing. Mm -hmm. So we put a complete pump kit in these. It comes with every piece in, in here. This is another thing we replace a ton of is these pins right here. This guide pin for that slide. I always want to check it and see if it's got any wear or anything because that's what keeps that guide straight. There's a little spring there. That's really easy to lose. Now we will be putting a 500 boost valve and stuff in this thing. Make it work really nice for him. Stator looks really good. Now, actually, we're going to be updating the stator on this one, huh, Trent? Yeah. We're going to be putting a uh, Sonex uh, hardened stator in it on this one here. Now, you can tell here the old band finally just give up here. We don't know if it's just got a lot of metal in here grinding it off or the band just burn up went metal to metal. So. That sucks. Yep. Yeah. Because you're... Probably no good. No, that drum's bad. That drum's really bad right there, so it can't be. It'll just you can try to clean it up, it just keep grinding material off that band no matter how you look at it. So But we got I got new drums over there in the box. So. These, these are a common problem that we have to replace a ton of. Reverse clutch here. So a lot of people ask me what these holes do right here and they say oh it's to lubricate the clutch. It's actually this these holes are designed to get the oil off the plate and get it off the clutch. That way the clutch comes right on. So that's physically what that is. They do make earlier ones that don't have those and they did add them. They took them away and added them back. So you'll see them they be in some units and then not in some units. we have our three fork clutch pack here doesn't look like it's ever been apart look at the teeth here Trent you can see here we're starting to strip the clutch now the teeth have wore oh, off yep. yes sir so that's a common problem with these um, you see a lot of it now we will be going back with a Z Ray Best Z pack so make it a lot nicer for him those things got a lot of clamping. Um, this little six clutch here just won't stand a chance. You can start beefing them up or anything. I mean, they'll last for a little bit, but it don't take much to take them out. You got to bump the pressure up so high in the unit, then you start breaking the pump and all that type of stuff. So. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. Some of these factory units, the pressure you have to put in them. To make yeah, them work. To make them work. If you put mm -hmm. a jam in them and they don't have the money to build their transmission, you, you can't skimp. It'll take that tranny out instantly. Mm -hmm. You're able to program those, but it's not what we like to do. We have our forward clutches here and our engine brake clutches. Uh, I already got mine all soaking, so. But uh, still look good. I mean, not burn up in that respect. Nice. Every time we tear one of these down, we're just looking for something. <laughs> going, oh, come on. Uh, same here. 
Yeah, see, we got pretty good ruddage here. Uh -huh. This is a common problem, too. When you see this brass washer right here for the sprag, you're going to find a ton of wear right here. They just don't last, and they don't live. So that don't mean the rest of the sprag ain't any good. You just want to look for any chatter marks or anything like that. It really looks nice. Yeah. So get in here. Same way, look for any chatter marks wear it looks really nice like I say these washers they just wear you you can feel that lip do you see that big old lip right there oh yeah thing? you can yep you can I mean it's a 40,000 yep. compared it's to this nice. one see it's brand new, brand smooth. new. Yep. and they, these look the same when you put them in there yeah now the new one we come back will be a, a dual cage and it'll have metal uh, guides there for the washers so Amazing how hard brass is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, against that. Mhm. Mm Go ahead and take these pistons out real quick here. I got my flashlight right there, actually. I can't believe them lights ain't bright over here, but they're not. Let me get you a little spotlight over yeah. here. Yeah. Normally I have the back door open, but the day's so windy that you can't have the door open today. Just too much wind. Man, we are very lucky. We barely missed a tornado the other day. Yeah. We had like three of them around here. So. Now we do have this little bearing right here on top. You want to really check this thing out really good. This thing will cause all kinds of wine problems in park, neutral. Uh, you think it's a pump and it's not. It's physically this little bearing right here. So really pay attention to that. Also down in here in the bottom, you have a little green O-ring down in here. It's down in this groove right there. Can you see it, Trent, me pulling it out? Mm -hmm. Focus. There we go. Yep. It's green in color. It'll be in your overhaul kit, but it is in there, and you need to replace it. So and then you have your lube seal here. So now, when you come into these bonded pistons like this, guys, always get a kit that has all your pistons because these things shrink up like crazy. And this is the number one, three, four failure too. Is this piston right here? Uh, the lip just uh, doesn't stick out anymore. The tranny warms up, boom, it leaks all the way around it. So you can kind of get in here and check it. I mean, there's just no tension on that thing, just nothing yeah. at all. Or if you get a new one over here, this thing is going to have to pop on. Yeah, I mean, just... Yeah. And the same way here, this lip sticks out so far compared to this one here. It's already been laid over. See. So, same way with these here too. They're hard as a rock. Replace all that stuff. Same way here. This one here is totally gone too. So, just make sure we get an overhaul kit, get all your bonded pistons. Now we we are putting a five pinion planet in the front and rear on this one here. Now, we are not putting billet shafts or anything, but we are putting uh, five pinion planets, so. Stand that up like that, and look at that. Comes right off. You can do that four wheel drive. You can't do the two wheel drive to see in there. So. Yeah. There's our four pinion. And then we have our, our five pinion here. So, now these are out of his old tranny that are still in really good shape that we're going to be putting back in here. There's no damage to them or anything like that. So, it's going to save him some money. And we just put these, look at them really good, put them on the shelf uh, for parts. Same way here. This thing will be war plumb out 90% of the time. Um, it'll be worn the outer splines right here.
That's dangerous, sir. It worked good. <laughs> it did work good. <laughs> okay. And you can see here this thing's starting to strip. Yes, sir. They fixed the problem here by hardening and stuff like that, uh, but uh, they didn't harden it all the way down to where it fixed the problem here. Now, I did want to get in here and show you guys. You don't see this too often right here. Now, this is the, the, the part we took out of the GTO uh, to start with, and how many times do you see this spline twisted? This splines into the forward clutch here, and then it splines into the rear planet in the back. But he almost twisted that off too. I'll turn it over, see him splines are straight, then twist, fix and twist that whole end off right here. That's how abusive. Like I said, we don't know if, if they're, I, I think they're neutral dropping it. I think they're physically revving this thing up and dropping it in the gear. Because the damage it has every time it comes in here is, is like that. You know, so we really don't know. He lets his brother drive it. It comes back that way, or it don't come back at all, and he has to go get a wrecker after it. So this time here, his brother's not going to be driving it. He said he's tired of it. So we'll see how far it goes from here. Because we're putting it back in with a 3,000 stall converter. Um, everything. I mean, it's going to be really nice when we get done with it. So. Well, unfortunately, we got a weak case. Man, see, that's what I hate about cores, guys. The center support's uh, spun in the case down in here. And it's for this high-powered this high of a car, it's just not worth building it. So you can see here where the rear supports uh, has spun in the case, starting to cut the aluminum out right here. See how the... Support is up under the land right here. Yes. So, and you can see the big gap in between here, how this thing's been moving back and forth. We'll get this out of here because we want the pieces, but it's going to take some abuse to get it out. And it's not something I want to show you on camera. So, what I'm going to do is uh, hunt for another case. I have a bunch of these already tore down outside and stuff in the trailers. And we'll get this support out just so we can look at the planets and try to save some more pieces that we need. So, cores, guys, you just never know what you're going to get. Pretty nice stuff all through here. Case is trashed, but what do you say? You know, we got two more cores back here that uh, we're going to be tearing down, too, that uh, we're going to be building another tranny or other vehicles, too. So, we got a Dodge, big tire. I don't know how big these tires 61 are. 61 inches. We're fixing to tear this thing down. He had it built. Tons of money. Didn't last no time. We're going to tear it down and see uh, what they did. It's supposed to have all billet shafts and stuff like that in it. Looks like it has one billet shaft coming out of the front, but uh, we don't know what the internals look like. So, got a lot more show to come. Y'all stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe. See you tomorrow. Y'all right, have a great day. I took it outside and did my thing to it. So, I got it out. But here, look at down in here. You can see how bad this thing was starting to strip out in the case right here. That is not a case you want to put back in your car, whether it's your pickup, your daily driver, and you dang sure don't want to put it back in a race car. So, now being that he's going to be doing a lot of manual shifting and stuff like that, we are going to be taking the wave out of the back of the low reverse clutch, getting rid of that, and then stacking some steels and setting our clearance and stuff like that. So, that'll make it uh, a lot better tranny shifting in the second and stuff. So. Always want to check your sprag assembly. Make sure it's not all gouged up, chatter marks all over and stuff like that. Put a new sprag in the back here. So always check your land here. They make two different sizes, two different heights right here. If you're changing parts, this is where you get into trouble. So I say a lot of people take them apart and put them back together, but when you start changing parts is where you always get into trouble. And it's the little stuff that'll get you. Really nice looking sun gear. Check our planet out here. Like I say, this is a core, so we paid really good money for this thing, and we want to try to get something out of it. Really nice looking planet. So. 
Uh, look on both sides of this ring gear teeth here. I've been seeing a lot of wear on the back sides here. This side here, not so much, but on this side here, you'll see it. So, got a few good parts, really nice. We can, uh, like I said, we're going to save a few of these parts, put them on the shelf, put his five pinion planets and stuff like that in this unit. So, it's going to be nice. So, y'all stay tuned. More show to come. Y'all have a great day.